All right, so this is part three of the tutorial where we're going to look at how to create that flip card type interaction. Uh, so what we have so far is we have the shape comes in. I can click it. That gives me the selected state. right? And now what I want to do is have the object go off the screen and then I want another shape to come in. And this really is the power of this type of interaction. If we look at this interaction, basically we just have one shape which is the card. There's no slide layers and there's really only one trigger to pause the timeline when this slide, when the when this object animation, the entrance animation completes. So let's do this. We have it paused. What we need to do is have it resume so we can have another card come up. So all we're going to do is add a button. So I'm going to go to Insert. I'm going to go to Controls, choose a button, and we'll just say, uh, we'll call this our Continue button. That's always good to title things. So we're going to come over here. I like to do BTN, continue. So this way I know it's button, continue. This way it's easy to sort through the different buttons. And we'll put that on the bottom here. So we've got our continue button and we have our card. So what's going to happen is the card's going to animate in and we want it to animate out. So what we can do is put a trigger on here. And what we're going to do is figure out well, how do we do that? How do we get it to animate out? Well, the card has pause timeline when the entrance animation completes. So it comes in, it's going to pause. All we need to do is resume the timeline. So we're going to add a trigger. What do I want to do? I want to resume timeline of what? Of the slide. So resume the timeline of this slide when the user clicks on the button continue. Hit OK. If we preview this, what should happen is the card comes in. Right, I can click when I'm ready to move on, continue. It resumes the timeline, the card goes out. Now we want another card to come in. This right here is really the power of this. So I've got a simple interaction. It's a button and a card and a couple of triggers. That's it. And it actually does quite a bit, right? There's no base layers or anything like that. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to duplicate this card. So I'm just going to select the card here, hit Control D, right? So now I duplicated it and it's titled. Now you'll notice when I duplicated it, it kept the same trigger. So it's going to pause it when this animates in. And I'm just going to move this down the, the um, timeline. So I'm going to duplicate it again. And there's another one. And I'm just going to move it down the timeline. I'm going to duplicate it again. There's another one. I'm just going to move it down the timeline. I'm just going to stretch the timeline out. The timeline's timing is irrelevant because I'm going to end up pausing the timeline and maybe add a restart button and so I can review everything again. The main thing though here is that we have a card that will stop. And then when I click the button, it goes out. This one comes in. Click the button. Click the button. Click the button. So let's preview that. Once you get that first card built and you've got your continue button, it's just a matter of creating more cards. So you can create 100 cards real quick if you want to. So when we preview this, it comes in. See, I can get my information. Continue. Goes out. The next one comes in. All right, that looks good. Continue. Goes out. The next one comes in. And I could do that 100 times if I want to. So that's basically it. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to align these so they look nice and neat, right? So we're going to align these here and arrange them so they're lined up really nice and neat. You can you know, move them into place wherever you want to. And um, everything should be fine. Now the one other thing I would say is when you get to the last one, you've got to figure out what you want to do. I put a restart button on mine. Now I don't know what the last one is. So I actually did this. If you move your playhead here and you hit the C key or you can right click and you can create a cue point. So now I have a cue point here. Now this is what I did for the demo I built. I don't know how many cards I'm going to add. So when I build a template, it's only going to have one card. So what I want to do is I'm going to have a restart button. So I'm just going to copy this button here. So we'll just do Control D. And let's just put this over here uh, just so we can see it. And we're going to call this Restart. Right? And let's just move this down a little nudge. Okay, so we've got our Restart button. 
and we'll just keep it visible the whole time just so we don't have to mess around with the triggers. So we've got our restart button. Let's go ahead and title this. So button restart. All right. So we're going to uh, we've got our restart button here. I'm going to just move this down to the bottom. So the restart button, what do we want to do with the restart button? The restart button, we want that to be hidden. So let's go ahead and put the initial state to hidden. So it's not visible yet. And when do I want the restart button to be visible? Well, when it's let's say when I'm when the animation completes for the last card. Well, I don't know what the last card's going to be, right? I might end up creating 500 cards, so then I got to find that 500th card and and add a trigger. Or what happens if I have a trigger on that card and then I end up having uh, moving the card around and then it messes up my trigger. So I just created a cue point. I can move anywhere on the timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a trigger that changes the state of this restart button to normal when the timeline reaches this cue point. So let's do that. So change the state of the button restart to normal when the timeline reaches cue point one. See what's nice is if I keep adding cards, I just have to move my cue point. I don't really have to do anything. The other thing is I could pause the timeline because I don't want it to end up running to the end. So let's go ahead and add another trigger. What do I want to do? I want to pause the timeline of what? The slide when the timeline reaches cue point one. So now whenever it doesn't matter where this is at, wherever I put it, it's going to show this and it's also going to pause the timeline. And then on the restart button we can add a trigger to replay the slide. So let's go ahead and do that. So what do I want to do? I want to jump to slide. Which slide? This one when the user clicks the restart button. Now I'm going to jump to the slide and that will allow me to rewatch it. Now another thing when I want to Rewatch or redo that interaction on the slide. I need to come down to the properties here. And what I want to do is when it's being revisited, what do I want to do? I want to reset it to its initial state. So this way, when I revisit this slide, it's going to load up like it was brand new and I haven't done anything on there. So let's preview this and see what we have. So we have a slide comes in, it pauses. Click it, get my information, move on. Another slide comes in. And then another slide. And at this point, we got one more slide, right? At this point, it should pause it and we should see the restart button. And when I click on restart, it should just jump back to the beginning of what we were doing. So you can see how that works now. A good thing to do, a lot of people use variables and mess around with this button in the continue state. This is what's easier. Just put this on top, right? And then just make sure it's on top here. Or you can set it to hide, but it really doesn't matter. <coughs> <coughs> we can see it animate in, right? Continue, continue, continue. And at the last one, it should restart. And it looks like it's the same button, see? And then that's easier than messing around with variables. So anyway, that's basically it on this. So we've got this card. We can animate it in. We can stop it. It's essentially a button and a card. And there's two triggers. And then you're just duplicating uh, the card and, and just continuing that. And then this cue point makes it easy. So if I keep adding cards, I just have to move the cue point. I don't have to do all the triggers and stuff. The triggers go with the cue point. So that's basically it on this. I'm going to give you a fourth tutorial and that's going to show you how to edit the content because having to go into a hundred cards and the states and customizing all this content on the states, that can be uh, pretty tedious. So I'm going to show you a simple way uh, to customize that content and make it really easy to update those cards.